it's Clay. Welcome to another League of Legends video. This is going to be a Y buy on Anivia, the Cryo Phoenix. She is a mage uh, and, and a little bit of an old school champion in League of Legends, but uh, I'm kind of curious to see if she'll make a bit of a resurgence in this new kind of preseason form meta, which has shifted back towards some of these mage styled casters, but. Uh, we we will see. Uh, time will tell. She is a champion who I think her her real claim to fame was kind of in season two. I think Froggen specifically uh, really uh, mastered her and brought her to the forefront and uh, sh just showed out how strong and powerful she can be. Then in season three, with the rise of the assassins, she pretty much fell off the face of the earth. Someone who struggles against assassins with her low mobility. Um, so it kind of fell off a little bit, but now that assassins have kind of fallen back a little bit and, and are in a less powerful position, I wonder if maybe she'll see a bit of a resurgence. But anyways, I'm playing her in, middle, in the mid lane this game. This is a normals match, and I must admit to you guys that I am not the most experienced Anivia player, uh, and I definitely claim no mastery over her, but uh, this was, uh, you know, with, with some of these mid lane mages, uh, it's one of those situations where I don't play mid all that often, and so I feel like I need to kind of take advantage of whenever I have good games on them. I need to do a why buy just because they're a little bit, you know, they just don't come around all that often. Whereas somebody like like an AD carry, like a Caitlyn or Ezreal, you know, I play them all the time, and I really feel like I have mastery over them, and I can talk confidently. But with someone like a Nivea, there's a nice Q right there, QE. With someone like a Nivea, I feel a little bit less confident, a little bit less um, able to really, uh, I guess... Uh, speak with with you know like I said mastery over her play style but anyways uh, I thought this was a good game and wanted to show her off nonetheless so again a little bit of a word of warning I'm definitely not the world's best Anivia player but uh, I do think she's a lot of fun and I thought this was a good game so that's why I'm showing it anyways enough of that shenanigans out of the way um, so Anivia what does she do well, she is uh, a champion who has really, really strong zone control. I kind of liken her a little bit to Ziggs, I think is maybe one of her best comparisons. And one of the reasons why I think possibly we could see a resurgence with her, because I think she has the chance to to really fill that same role. She's got great pushing potential, great you know area and zone and space control. Uh, similar to Ziggs, she also has some really nice crowd control as well with the, her wall, and she's got some nice slows. And is also a nice AoE stun, so I think she definitely has the potential to be a very strong champion, but we will see. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about her abilities and kind of figure out what's going on with her. So first up, her passive is um, Rebirth. So she was actually, I believe, the first champion that had this, this sort of revive Guardian Angel type mechanic. And then now we have, you know, Zac and Aatrox as well. Um, I'm sure there's another one I'm forgetting about, which you guys will likely tell me in the comment section below. Thank you very much. But anyways, um, so if she if she does take fatal damage, she will actually turn herself into an egg at the location where she died. Where she died, um, and then um, if she if she continues to survive in her egg form for six seconds, uh, then she will actually revive. Uh, so, which is a really cool, you know, just again makes her very tough to deal with in lane. There are times when I kind of use this to my advantage, where I play a little more aggressively than I maybe normally would, just because I feel confident in the fact that I, you know, have this revive going on that I don't necessarily need to worry about. You know, as long as you die in a good place where they can't really get to you, especially under your tower, a lot of times, you know, this can be very good for you. So. Anyways, that is her passive. Um, now, when she goes to her egg form, she has full health, uh, but her armor magic resist is weaker at lower levels, but better at higher levels. So, as the game goes on, she does her her egg form does become tankier. Um, and if you want to go, there actually is there are people who play more of a tanky build, uh, especially focusing on mana, because uh, you know then it makes her again even more difficult to kill, uh, and then kind of relying on her very high base damages to deal damage, but then be very tanky as well. So it kind of makes up for her immobility. Next up will be her Q, Flash Frost. This is a lined skill shot, um, and then it will travel in a line dealing damage through all enemies that it passes through, and then you can detonate it again, so similar to like a Gragas Barrel or a Lux E, where um, you can detonate it again, and then it will uh, deal additional damage and also stun any enemies that are in that area. So a very powerful ability. Um, you know, like I said, it's got this AoE component where you know, it's good for pushing and farming. You can use it on the minion waves, or you can use it on the enemy champions if you can line it up and get the nice stun. It's a, it's a, it's a very powerful um, 
in that regard. And actually getting Yasuo very, very low right there, using my stun on him and my ignite as well. They're going to use my ultimate to push this wave out and then go back to base. Because I've got absolutely no mana and very low health. But uh, definitely one of her core abilities. It's got nice and long range. But the real kicker about this one is two things. It has an extremely high mana cost. 80 up to 160 mana at max rank. And then also it is one of the slowest projectiles in the game. Like it's just an extremely slow traveling spell. It takes forever to get to its location. Um, so it's, it's, it makes it difficult to land. Especially at long ranges. It can be very tricky. They're actually missed right there. I tried to use my ultimate to slow him and then tried to get a nice QE, but missed on the Q. So, anyways, that's kind of the thought process there. I believe that I maxed this ability out second. I put an additional point into it early because I felt like uh, against this melee character in Yasuo that I could use it to kind of predict his movements on, on when he wanted to go and farm, making it easier for me to, to land these Qs. Actually missed it again right there. So that's kind of my thought process there, but I do think maxing E first is a little bit stronger. Uh, so kind of take that with what you will. But, you know, learning to land these Flash Frost is very, very important and definitely what makes her powerful. Um, and, and also with the high mana cost, it really forces her itemization towards heavy mana or mana regeneration based builds. Next up would be her W, Crystallize. This is her infamous wall. Uh, it actually looks like Yasu wants to go ham, and I missed my Flash Frost on him, unfortunately. And it looks like Eve's going to come in, but I'm going to flash and going to make it out just fine. Not too much of a problem there. So with this Crystallize, Anivia will create a wall, which will kind of, it blocks all movement. So it's kind of just like, like creating a, a real wall uh, where it creates this terrain. The wall will last five seconds before it melts. And as you put more points into it, the wall length will actually increase, actually doubling from minimum ranks to max rank. And this is a really interesting spell in the fact that you know, it can be one that is very, very powerful. You can use it to kind of split teams in half. Um, so again, the very high skill cap comes into play here when you want to use this properly. Um, but uh, So you can use it to split teams in half and, and create your good team fights for your team. But on the other hand, you know, you can also... Uh, if you misplace it, you can you know prevent your teammates from following up and picking up kills. And uh, they're actually using it right there to try and disengage. Now, I know that I'm under my tower, so I didn't actually think that they could follow up. Uh, and actually, it looks like Yasuo ulted me, but he's definitely not going to. He's so low. Uh, so my, my passive really helped me out right there. Um, going to throw out the Flash Frost, and actually, sh Eve is just going to run away, unfortunately. Uh, shoot. But uh, a good good use of the passive there to save my life from that gank. Um, so again, the big thing about the passive is getting yourself in a good position so that when you do die, you're not in such a bad spot. So that's her wall. Definitely want to try and figure this out in terms of when to use it and when not to use it because it can be really good or it can be really bad. kind of reminds me of Gragas in, in his ultimate in that regard where you know sometimes there are really good Gragas ultimates and sometimes there are really bad ones and... You know, it can be, if you use it correctly, it can be really, really good. But if you don't, it can be very, you know, detrimental to your team, actually. So keep that in mind. Next up would be her E, Frostbite. This is a, just a targeted spell where you target an opponent and you will deal, you know, just throw damage out to them. The real kicker about this spell, though, is that if you th use Frostbite on a target that is chilled, and I'll explain that in a second, the damage is actually doubled and the AP ratio is doubled. So, you know, we're talking about a spell at max rank that deals 175 damage, but if you deal it to someone who is chilled, you're going to do 350 damage. Your, your AP ratio goes from 50 up to 100% of your ability power. So you really, really, really want to use this ability on someone who is chilled. Now, let's talk a little bit about this idea of chilling. Now, enemies that are damaged by your Flash Frost become chilled, and also enemies that are damaged by your Ultimate become chilled. Um, so so with, the, with your Ultimate, they're only chilled for one second, and it's slowing their movement and attack speed by 20%. Now, with your Flash Frost... Uh, you're gonna, they're gonna be um, chilled for three seconds, and then their movement speed is slowed by 20%. So your Q has a has a longer duration chill uh, than your ultimate, but both your ultimate and your Q will work in terms of applying the frost or the chill, excuse me, and then allowing your uh, frostbite to deal the maximum damage. Now this isn't the longest range spell in the world, but it is on a lower cooldown. So I like to max this ability first. And kind of the, the combo that I was coming up with is using my ultimate to kind of push the wave. And if my opponent walked into my ultimate, 
uh, then I would hit them with a flat with a frostbite to get that max that that massive amount of damage. So overall, just a very powerful spell uh, with very very high base damage. That's kind of the the name of the game here with Anivia. Next up would be her ultimate, Glacial Storm. This is a targeted ability using it right there on the ground. Basically, you wherever you put your cursor and hit Alt R, then your ultimate will target on that location. Um, and then actually looks like a little bit of a team fight here. I uh, can use my actually my wall in a very poor way right there. Gonna have to flash over, and they're using my ultimate to try and kind of give us a zone to fight on top of. And they're using my E and my Q to get the stun and the damage onto Mundo, and giving us a nice two for zero right there. Now we're gonna move on to this dragon and put ourselves in a very strong position here, moving into the mid game. So, anyway, so uh, with Anivia's ultimate, um, <coughs> this is a toggle abil ability. So. You create this blizzard in the target area, this big circle. Enemies are chilled, their movement speed and attack speed are slowed by 20%, and then they are dealt magic damage per second. And you can kind of think of it as like Karthus's E, his defile, where you know he does this damage surrounding him. Uh, but with Anivia, you can kind of place it on the ground, um, and then it drains mana per second until you deactivate it. So um, yeah, it really makes Anivia's damage very, very high. But it also, um, actually, look at this. I actually am going for this blue buff, but I am so low and I'm so out of mana that this thing is almost assuredly going to kill me. Um, so a bit of a fail right there. I think it was the Teemo Mushroom that probably cost it for me because I probably would have had enough kill or enough health to auto-attack it. But thankfully, this Diana was very good. She recognized that I was doing pretty well and wanted to help me out. So thank you very much for that, and uh, Diana. But uh, so anyways, those are, those are Anivia's abilities. Uh, she has a lot, a very nice interesting mix of, she's got a lot of crowd control, she's got a lot of utility, the stun on her Q, the slow on her Q, the slow on her ultimate, but then she also has very, very high base damage if you're able to cr properly combo her abilities. So with her Q, let's look at that. The base damage, 180, 50% AP. But if you manage to get both the first cast and the second cast, so like the, the first cast is when it travels in a line, but the second cast is when it explodes and detonates and stuns, if you get both, you're getting a maximum of 360 base damage with a 100% AP ratio. Um, so very, very, very high base damage. There's a nice stun with my Q. There's the E right there. Now I'm gonna tr just going to force him to run through my ultimate and actually use my W right there quite poorly to block myself in. So that's kind of what I was talking about in terms of uh, poor use of your ultimate, uh, but hopefully I can actually stay alive long enough to survive. Oh, Teemo, please, I'm begging you. Mm, nothing I can do there by the Teemo damage over time, unfortunately. So I do end up falling. Got myself in a little bit of a bad spot with a poor use of my wall. Really is what cost me my life right there. Um, but anyway, so her, like I said, on her Q, you know, you're talking the diff the double the damage is effectively doubled if you can land both the line the the straight line and the detonation, and then also on her E, you know, the base damage 175 plus 50 AP is nothing to write home about. But if you can land it on a target that is chilled, probably by your ultimate or your Q, you know, then you really get the damage of 350 plus 100 percent AP. So that's kind of the name of the game with Anivia that. You want to optimize her Q and her E and land them at the opportune times to really take advantage of those high base damages. Now, Anivia is a champion who is extremely mana dependent, so in this game I probably went a little overboard in terms of mana. I went for both the Tear and the Rod of Ages, and I also even went for the, um, and here's actually a team fight. I'm going to get my stun, and there's a nice kill onto the Scion, but, um, and let's see if I can land a nice W here. Let's see, waiting for it, looking at this Teemo, there's a really, really nice W to corner off this Teemo, and you see how I forced him to walk into my ultimate and to my team, separating him from his team, there's another kill onto Mundo, and so a very nice stretch of play right there, definitely, um, you know, the way to play Anivia, and there's a nice stun with my Q and an E uh, to pick up the kill onto Evelyn, so a nice combo of my abilities. Okay, sorry about that guys, I had a bit of a hiccup there with my LOL replay. Um, for some reason when I tried to rewind it actually totally twerked out so we're gonna try to pick things up here as best as I can my apologies for that but uh, let's go ahead and watch this team fight one more time um, and I think that I can potentially replay but anyways I want to try to show off what my thought process here with Anivia and really when I'm playing Anivia in team fights my main thought here is zone control so right there is a really good spot of using my ultimate because it's kind of splitting their team in half and then I'm using the wall to force Teemo to run through my ultimate 
and actually uh, hit the E right there to pick up the kill. Now Mundo is again walking into my ultimate uh, and let's see if I can get the stun on my Q. There is uh, there's another double kill right there I believe with my E picking up a second kill. Now um, this, uh, wow he's getting really really low, a nice E to juke away. And, oh, his shield came up just at the right moment. He would have been dead for my auto attack. But here I see Evelyn, so I just throw out the quick point-blank stun. And then follow it up with the E right there to help pick up that kill with my ultimate. And effectively clean up that team fight. So a good stretch right there. Timely use of my stuns and my ultimate and my also my wall. Really at the beginning when I split the team in half and then se separated Teemo from his teammates with my wall was kind of, I think, the real kicker there as to why that team fight went so well for us. But... Anyways, uh, so I believe I've walked through all of Anivia's abilities and highlighted just the importance of comboing them together properly. If you can, you know, land, you know, the, the stun and the E if properly, if you, can, if you can use them the way that they're supposed to be used, uh, you can really maximize her damage. Uh, her damage is very, very high in terms of base damage and AP scaling if you can land them properly. Now, one of the real, real kickers about Anivia is that she's extremely mana hungry. You know, her, 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 her Q has a very, very high mana cost, and her ultimate also has that mana per second cost. So you really do want to build up a massive mana pool on Anivia. So items like Tear into uh, Seraph's Embrace, Rod of Ages, even maybe something like a, uh, possibly even like a Frozen Heart, or a, um, uh, what what's the similar one? A Frozen uh, Fists, Iceborne Gauntlet. Those items are potentially strong on Anivia because she is her damage is very, very high so long as you have the mana. And actually, there's a nice wall to prevent the retreat and forcing the Evelyn to flash over the wall. You know, because, but because she requires so much mana from her, from her ultimate and the, her Q, you, know, you really, really want to itemize for mana. And blue buffs are extremely important. Anivia is probably one of the most blue buff reliant champions in all of League uh, just because, like I said, of her very high mana costs. You know, you're going to build these mana items, and then you also want the regen to get your mana back. So, uh, they're forcing the flash there from Scion. And, uh, yeah. So, anyways, in turn, let's talk a little bit about gameplay style before we get into itemization. I've talked a little bit about that. But in terms of her gameplay style, she's definitely a farm-heavy kind of team fight styled mage. You know, she, she does have some burst, and she can be scary in lane, especially if you can land your Q consistently. There's a nice stun onto Dr. Mundo, but... Um, I would say for the most part she's just a champion who really wants to farm. Uh, and and there a, there's a nice use of my ultimate to try to, again, split their team in half. There's a nice point blank stun and E and ignite onto the Evelyn. Um, so we're just chaining our crowd control. There's the wall to make sure that she cannot get away. And uh, now going to dive in using my ultimate there to slow Dr. Mundo from a distance. Uh, and that was a really good positioning on my ultimate. It sat there for quite a bit of time doing a lot of good for my team. There's a nice E to chunk the Teemo down. Throwing the Q over the wall just to maybe try and get the stun. Um, I'm not actually sure if I did or not just because um, <coughs> not very familiar with Anivia's uh, sounds. I'm sure it makes a different sound if you land it or not. But anyways, in terms of playstyle, Anivia is a very farm heavy champion. You definitely want to use your ultimate. is one of the best farming tools just because it's this massive AoE damage over time. And basically you can put down your ultimate for about 2 or 3 seconds and cl instantly clear the wave. Um, you want to set it down right in the middle between the melee minions and the caster minions and pick up the wave almost instantly. She's a fantastic pusher once she hits level 6. Um, and then, you know, it's really your ultimate kind of leads off your combo. So you want to start with your ultimate, you can get the slow, and you can chill them. Then you want to throw it up maybe with, uh, get, it's easier to land the Q once you've got the slow from your ultimate. So your ult really helps you in terms of following up with the stun on your Q. And then you want to follow up with your E. Um, so you could even throw out your E in between, you know, like an o R, E, Q, and then follow up with another E if it comes off of cooldown in time. But, um... That's kind of her core combo. Is it, it, Her ultimate really leads things off uh, in terms of damage and, and, and setting up her other abilities. This is really where you want to go. But, you know, Anivia is, is really, really good at controlling space, you know, because her ultimate kind of puts this area on the ground that says, if you walk into this, you're going to die. It's basically what you're saying to the enemy team. You know, it becomes very important, you know, for them to stay out of your zone of control. And then when you combine that with your wall... Um, and actually, I really, really wanted to help out onto this Eve, but I ran out of mana, unfortunately, and I'm really sure we got, I could have gotten the kill 
had I the mana to follow up, but I just unfortunately did not. So my, my dear, deepest apologies to you, Diana. You valiantly died trying to help me get the blue buff. But, um, so anyways, like I said, very, very strong with her zone of control is really the hallmark of a Nivea play, is that she can really control the battlefield. And so that's why I, I think she has comparisons with Ziggs, because Ziggs also does the same thing with his, with his poke and his, 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 his wave clear, his pushing potential, and also his zone of control with his, with his, um, explosive minefield and his satchel charge and his bombs. It gives him nice AoE crowd, you know, zone control. And so Nivea, I think, is very similar in that regard. Um, she can be bursty, especially if you go for a straight AP build. You know, if you land her full combo, she's got tremendous ratios. You know, we're talking about a 200% with, uh, like, roughly 700 base damage plus 200% AP between her Q and her E if you optimally land them. Um, and then her ultimate as well. So, you know, definitely somebody who is capable of tremendous burst damage. But I think for the most part, people tend to build her as more of a mana build so that she can, you know, have this uptime on her main abilities. And then you don't necessarily need to stack the big ticket AP items like Death Cap, you know, um, you're definitely going to want to Void Staff at some point, but, you know, like Death Cap, Zonias, those things aren't necessarily the best on her just because she doesn't necessarily need AP as much as she needs mana to sustain her abilities is, I think, really her hallmark. But actually, we, again, leaving our Dan out to die on a very poor wall right there, again, but unfortunately, we do pick up the Mundo. I think I got him with my Ignite there. Uh, but a poor wall and, and also poor following up on our Diana's engage. So sorry to this poor Diana. We're just leaving you out to dry. But it looks like our Yasuo goes in. So I'm just going to follow up on them as best as I can. And uh, we're going to look to take this inhibitor. Uh, but it looks like uh, I've started to really pull ahead in terms of, you know, once and now that I've gotten this, this nice item lead, I've really have become quite powerful in terms of being able to sustain my ultimate quite for quite a long time, and also I, uh, you know, use my spells frequently. Looks like my team is going super ham. I think this is very dangerous. Just with Evelyn, she is so scary. Actually, trying to use my wall to help disengage, but gonna surely avenge uh, our Morgana with a kill right there, and pick myself a nice double buff, which is really useful. Like I said, Anivia is one of the best champions in the game at using a blue buff. So um, let's talk a little bit about itemization. Uh, you're definitely going to want a mana item first. I would say tier and or Rod of Ages is really key. You know, if you're somebody who is probably more experienced, you could probably just do with one. But if you're newer to her, like I've said before, with newer champions, you often have a harder time managing your mana. So if you're newer to Anivia, you're probably going to want to do both. Now, this does definitely... Uh, you know, hinder your damage because you're not building ability power. You know, you, other other mages are going to be doing you know you know a death cap and zonias by the time you finish your rod of ages and your seraphs embrace. And so um, and there's a really nice engage and a just full combo right there onto uh, Yasuo and now turning onto. Actually, I don't think my ultimate was hitting him at all, so that was kind of a bad, that poorly placed ultimate. But I let off with after Morgana hit the snare, I followed up with my Q and threw out the E and then put the ult right on top to finish off the Yasuo. But as I was saying, um, you really do want to itemize for some mana. Uh, you know, like I said, tier, Rod of Ages. You can also put in the uh, Thieves Unholy Grail. You know, so combining this with your Seraphs or your, and or your Rod of Ages can give you some nice uh, mana regen on top of the mana cost that you have. So like, even if you're going to be spamming out and using your abilities, this can kind of help you sustain your mana pool. And one of the nice things about this is that with Athenes, you're, uh, you know, when you rest when you kill a unit, uh, you will restore 12% of maximum mana, um, and then your mana regen is increased by 1%. So, like, uh, if you have a big mana pool, 12% of your maximum mana is going to, you know, be give you more mana than if you had less. So it's, that's kind of the thought process there. And the CDR is also nice on her giving her, you know, quicker time to move her ultimate around from different locations, because it does have a six second, six second cooldown, you know, and more ease, you know, your E goes down to under a four second cooldown, which is really nice, your Q goes on a lower cooldown, I actually missed my Q right there, kind of a poor place, and this there is a really nice wall to prevent them from escaping, and uh, gonna go ahead, and it looks like Cyan wants to tango with me, but I'm going to flash over the wall, and this is a really good spot to be in. So there's a nice ultimate and uh, E combo to kill the Scion. Um, and now looking to try and find who's ever over here. Can't really locate them, but going to try to pick up this blue buff. But I think Diana's going to take this one because I already have one, so that's okay. 
Um, now, after this, I definitely would want to go for a Void Staff. is 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 really good. Um, you know, uh, Death Cap or Zonias would also be really nice. Um, you know, that that'd probably be. I would say like a very standard core build could be like um, Tear into Rod of Ages, finish Seraphs, and then you could go for like your uh, Zonias and then Void Staff. That'd be like a very very solid four items, giving you a lot of damage from the Zonias and the. Uh, the Void Staff, and then the Zonias also helps keep you safe because she doesn't have any escapes. So if you do manage to get caught out, you can use the Stasis and hopefully your team can kind of come to your aid and clear the way for you. And then you get a lot of mana to sustain your spells with your Q, your E, your ultimate, you know, when you get the Death, the, the Rod of Ages, and the Seraph's Embrace. So that's kind of my thought process there. Now, I also went for the Athenes just because I wanted to try it out. Um, I felt like I needed the magic resist against the Teemo, who was definitely the strongest person on their team, and the Evelyn, also very strong, and Mundo. So they do have a lot of magic damage, and also even Sign with his spells. They have a lot of magic damage on their team. Really, Yasuo was their only heavy AD threat. Um, so I feel like I, the magic resist would not go away. CDR is definitely not a bad stat on Anivia, um, like, I, like I said before. Uh, and actually, we gave up Baron. I knew it was there. I was pinging it, but my team did not respond very well. Um, so that was kind of my thought process there, but I definitely think in hindsight that I kind of overdid it a little bit on terms of mana. I probably would have picked, I would say pick two out of these three items, but not all three. So this is probably a little bit of overkill in terms of mana management, but there's a nice QE combo, and just look how much damage that did to that sign. That was crazy. Just chunked him down. He has no magic resist whatsoever, so really able to chunk him down with my spells. But, um, so anyways, that's kind of the basics in terms of itemization. Now, like I said, for playstyle, Anivia is one of the queens of zone control, and you really want to abuse that. You want to make sure that you are kind of the, the, the field general in terms of when and where your team engages and, and how it all works out. You know, Anivia is the one that you want to kind of control the battlefield and, and create a, you know, kind of manipulate the terrain in such a way that, you know, wherever you cho your team chooses to fight becomes a very strong place for them to be. Because you've got, you can zone people away with your ultimate, you can split the team in part with your W, and then you've got a lot of damage in crowd control with your Q and your E. So that's kind of the thought process in terms of playstyle. Now, uh, let's talk about weaknesses. Anivia is definitely one of the most immobile champions in League. She's got probably the slowest base movement speed in the game, I believe. Um, oh, there's a really nice combo with my ult and my E onto Scion. It's going to pick up that kill using my wall and now turning onto Evelyn. Going to try to pick her up right there. Going to help with that. And I actually did get turned into egg form. But um, that was a good place to die because my team was able to really capitalize and protect me there. So as I was saying, she's very immobile. She has no escapes. You know, really her only way of keeping herself safe would be with her Q. Uh, if you can get a timely stun, that's her only way of really keeping herself safe and alive. Um, I'm thinking we're probably going to... Um, back off here because it looks like we're overstaying. I think Morgana gets picked off. Is Morgana like kind of did crazy things and I don't really know. Yeah, I think she either did or she ran over a mushroom. I'm not sure. Sorry Morgana. But anyways, so her big weaknesses are definitely her mobility and uh, you know if, if you can get on top of her and, and manage to dodge her Q specifically, she's really going to have a hard time against you. So actually look at this. I run over a mushroom and that's the end of me. So, Teemo, curse you. Curses to all Teemo players around the world. I hate you all. You're obnoxious. Ugh. But anyways, um, so her immob immobility really costs her in a lot of ways. Um, and it really makes it, I think, tricky to to really, I guess, play her optimally. Because, you know, she definitely needs to stay safe, stay in the back. And she can have a hard time against this the, the more of the high mobility meta which is going on, you know, especially with the assassins from season three. You know, she really can have a hard and difficult time against those types of champions. But you know, if you do get in a place where you can, you know, have these these team fights where you can kind of control the battlefield and use your terrain, you know, to your advantage and and, and use your zone control, then she can be a really powerful pick. So I would say Anivia is very situationally strong. In certain situations, she's really, really good, but in others, she's not so much. You know, especially if you, if, if you have teams that have very good hard engage, that have the ability to get on top of you very easily and quickly, you know, then I think she can be a big liability. But if you have other teams, you know, like this team we're playing against, they don't really have the best hard engage. You know, Dr. Mundo can't really hard engage. Maybe Evelyn is their best shot for engaging. But uh, there, we just totally blow up the Scion, and now moving on to the Evelyn, they're going to wall off 
to force their team apart. Um, and they're all running through my ultimate, so my ultimate was in a very good place. Um, but now it looks like Teemo is coming and he wants blood, so I'm going to try and get the stun off, but I missed it. I'm going to use the... Oh, yeah, he actually puts me into... Um, I'm in trouble here. Oh, I do actually come back up, but then I do end up falling. But actually, Teemo does go down to Caitlyn, so not all was lost, I don't think. Um, but anyways, overall, I think that... Yeah, she's situationally strong is the thing I'm going to say about Anivia. Um, and yeah, again, Morgana getting caught out by this Dr. Mundo. What are you doing? Yeah, is she going to live? Nope, she's not going to live. Again, getting caught out. A little bit crazy. But we're in a pretty strong place right now. I think we... Um, I don't know actually if we're going to be able to finish this game off or not. I don't remember. But, um, so yeah. You know, and, and Nivia does have some bad matchups. She, Her laning is definitely weak. She doesn't have the best laning... I, I don't know if it, I don't know if I would say it's weak, but just like she doesn't have the best landing. You, you, it's very reliant on landing her Q and following it up with her E. That's kind of her main combo, and it's hard to do that. You know, until you know once you hit six with your ultimate, it becomes a lot easier. But before that, it can be a little difficult. Um, and just look at this. Look at how long I'm able to uptime my ult right here to, as we finish off this Baron. So my massive mana pool is really, I think, helping me out in this regard. Um, so that was nice, able to pick up a Baron for my team. And uh, now we're going to be in a pretty strong position using the regen to get my mana back. Yeah, mana and health back. But um, it looks like actually, again, our Morgana gets caught out. I'm trying to use my ultimate. There's my Q and my E right there. Just pretty much three-shotting that uh, sign with one combo. Going to flash over this wall and see if I can maybe support from afar. But nobody is left to support, unfortunately. And I'm just going to fly away with my Cryo Phoenix Wings, and actually I thought a little bit about backdooring here. Gonna push in and go for this Nexus, but it looks actually like Yasuo did show up, which was the, the right call. But I, I thought that the possibility of backdooring was worth it, and we did give up one tower, so that wasn't the best, but it's okay. Um, we do end up picking up that Dragon, which is nice, and uh, now just waiting for my team to respawn so we can uh, kind of start our push afresh. Um, Managed to pick 13, 3, and 15, so up, I'm in a very strong position right now. Uh, I finished up my Zonias and my Void Staff, so I, combining my heavy mana with heavy damage uh, is really where I'm at right now in a good spot. But this Teemo is actually, I think, I don't know if we stand on a Mushroom or what, but he's really wrecking us. There's my ult, there's my Q, which missed, and Zonia's Inc. to try to keep Sign away. They were definitely targeting me, uh, but uh, there's the, just getting it with the tip of my ult and throwing out my E. And uh, he's going to fall. So now we're turning on to Evelyn. And uh, it actually looks like... I think maybe we should just kind of stick around and take this inhibitor. So we can push in onto their Nexus. But Teemo is still here. They're going to try to wall him off. But I get myself in a little bit of trouble. Need cooldowns. Using my shield for my Seraphs Embrace. There we go. Able to use the shield for my Seraphs to my advantage. I'm going to come back up with my uh, passive. Now using my auto ultimate and my QE to pick up uh, the GA there. And then again using my wall to make sure he cannot escape. And I think we might be able to end this. Yes, we are. So able to pick up this victory in a timely fashion. But anyways, that's Anivia. Uh, she's a fun champion to play. And if you can really get a feel for her, her zone control, she can be very, very powerful. Um, again, has similarities with Ziggs. Um, you know, very much dependent on you need to build some mana, but then you can utilize her very, very high base damages and uh, just kind of be somebody who, you know, is a very difficult champion to deal with. She can do a lot of really good things for her team, farms really, really well with her ult, and uh, can just be a powerhouse. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm curious to see if Anivia makes a bit of a comeback in season four. Uh, she was really good in Season 2, fell off quite a bit in Season 3, but we will see how things go forward. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. If you're new around here, feel free to subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.